Stop with the questions. Celebrate. And then they say, is Donald Trump an intellectual? Trust me, I'm like a smart person. See your seven nights. One of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint of water. Mike Lindell's a conspiracy. But you have it. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. They said nobody gets it in order. It's actually not that easy, but for me it was easy. Amazing. He can't sit down. He's got a burning in his butthole. He's got a fire. He's got a flame coming out of his butthole. Big, massive dumps. Oh, I have a term for that. I call it corporate communism. Well, somebody sent me a thing this morning where they're talking about putting the vaccine into salad dressing. You see, this is a simple meme that you would find on the internet, but this meme is very real. You ain't seen nothing yet until you see the flaming butthole. Putting us on our knees to China. Now witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle station. We will keep kicking your ass every single day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. It's Tuesday. And we got a show for you today. Uh, obviously, I think you've all probably heard about Herschel Walker. Nonetheless, we're going to talk about it. Uh, fun show. The fun stories of the day. <laughs> we're going to have uh, an interesting time with that, uh, including uh, Christian Walker, uh, who is... Uh, well, let's just say he's not happy <laughs> with the entire situation. Uh, we'll talk about that. We also have a bombshell about Dr. Oz um, murdering puppies. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Th this is an incredibly horrible story. So not fun. Uh, then we're going to go into a Ron DeSantis and his photo op being called out by workers on the ground. You're going to love the reaction to it. And then, uh, of course, Doc Mastriano saying insane things. The usual uh, Republicans saying uh, really ridiculous, dumb things. So fun, uh, as usual. So it makes a fun and disaster. With that said, please like and share the stream if you haven't already. Very important that you do so. Uh, with that, why don't we dive in? We'll start off with the Herschel Walker stories. Georgia candidate Herschel Walker, who calls himself pro-life, is facing a lot of criticism following the revelation that he had once paid for an abortion. So let it get into the details here. It's according to a report uh, from the Daily Beast by Roger Sollenberger, uh, a woman who asked not to be identified out of privacy concerns had told the publication that after she and Walker uh, had conceived a child while they were dating back in 2009, he then urged her to get an abortion. Now, normally, look, a situation like this, I wouldn't care. Most people would not care at all about it. This is not my business. It's not our business. It shouldn't matter at all. In a normal world, this would be not news. Why is it newsworthy then? Because Herschel Walker, candidate Walker, I should say, uh, who's a Republican, says openly that he would love to ban abortion. He says that abortion is murder, literally murdering babies, uh, and that if he had the chance, and he would if he's a senator, to ban it with no exceptions for rape or incest. 
none at all. So, yeah, there's some hypocrisy in this one, right? Now, going back to the information in the piece, the woman said that she had had the procedure and that Walker had actually reimbursed her for it. So she supported uh, these claims with, of course, receipts. So she brought the receipts. It's in the article. It was a $575 receipt from an abortion clinic, a $700 personal check from Walker addressed to her, and a bank deposit receipt that included a signed image of Walker himself. Fascinating. And the best part, though, is a get well card. Hey, you know, sorry about the whole <clears throat> uh, impregnating you and then, you know, asking you to get an abortion thing. Uh, feel better soon? Okay. Right? Sure. Now, again, the hypocrisy also extends to the reason for the said abortion, um, which, again, I, I don't really care what reason. That's your right. It's your body. That's it. <laughs> But his reasoning um, makes sense, actually. Now, the woman said that Walker, who was not married at the time, told her it would be more convenient to terminate the pregnancy, saying it was just not the right time to have a family, have a child. She agreed it was a mutual agreement uh, that they get an abortion. So, of course, he didn't pressure her, just like, hey, we're, we're not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. That's fair. Again, I have no problem for that particular reason. That said, the real reason we find out, though, at least from her, uh, she said that she had no idea that Walker had an, a, another out-of-wedlock child with another woman earlier that same year. Oops. So, yeah. Oh, man, I, you know, I'm not ready for... Uh, I'm, not, I'm just not ready to have a child. It's not the right time. Because I literally just had one with someone else. Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, maybe, you know, Walker was uh, in the middle of a bit of sexual anarchy. And uh, yeah, just didn't have time. But you know what? I don't I still don't care. <laughs> Again, not my business what he does with, well, you know. Tallywhacker. But whatever. OK, OK. But going to the hypocrisy, right? For Walker, it's. Abortions for me, or, you know, the person, the woman that I'm with, uh, but not for thee. No, no, no. I can have one. I can get one. I can have my girlfriend at the time get one because I am not ready. But when it comes to you, I don't care. If you're not ready, if you don't, have, uh, you know, have the resources for that child, or if you just don't want to add another child to that life, or God forbid, your life is literally on the line. I don't care. You were raped by an uncle. Don't care. You're a 10 year old. Don't care. That's Herschel Walker's stated policy positions. He does not care about you. He only cares about himself. Now, that said, asked if Walker ever expressed regret for this decision. Which, again, this, this really goes to the argument that right-wingers, I've seen them make to defend Walker. Well, people change. Uh, people change their positions. You know, they have, uh, they, they have situations where they, they kind of wake up and, and realize that, oh, it's the barbarity of this situation. And they realize that, you know, it was life and they feel regret. Well, did he ever feel regret? The woman said that Walker never showed any regret whatsoever for his decision. Hmm. Oh, interesting. I guess, so when it comes for him, when it comes to him, no regret at all. But when it comes to you, that's murder. And you should be thrown in prison for it. Because that's the Republican policy. Understand that what they have done in these states that have banned abortion completely, or, you know, had uh, very minimal exceptions, that, by the way, are, are pretty garbage, because you have doctors in these states that don't know whether or not they could do a life-saving procedure because the, the rules are so incredibly, uh, you know, vague and, and, and everything is uh, just gray. Well, they can't do these procedures because they're afraid that they're going to get hit with, you know, penalties 
for giving uh, an abortion or what the, the state would consider to be an abortion. So, that said, <clears throat> she uh, came forward with this information because she was fed up with the hypocrisy. She said, I just can't with the hypocrisy anymore. We all deserve better. I agree with that. So now, when this report came out, Herschel Walker immediately responded to it. Uh, here's what he said. Let me show, uh, show you the image here. Quote, this is a flat-out lie, and I deny this in the strongest possible terms. This is another repugnant hatchet job from a Democrat activist disguised as a reporter who has obsessively attacked my family and tried to tear me down since this race started. He's harassed friends of mine, asking if I fathered their children. Well, uh, hey, look, uh, based on your, on your experiences, is that really that far-fetched of a question? I mean, come on. Like, how many secret children do you have? Anyway, um, he's called my children secret because I didn't want to use them as campaign props in a political campaign. No, no, literally hiding them because you never saw them. Now they're using an anonymous source to further slander me. They'll do anything to hold on to power. It's disgusting gutter politics. I'm not taking this in. I'm planning to sue. I'm planning to sue the Daily Beast. N and just note that i planning for this defamatory lie. It will be filed tomorrow morning. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait. Discovery is going to be real fun. If it ever, of course, makes it that far. <laughs> Which it won't. It won't. So there's that. Um, now, Robert Ingram, after the Daily Beast reached out to the Walker campaign for some uh, for comment, Robert Ingram, uh, a lawyer representing both the campaign and Walker in his personal capacity, had responded to this. You're going to love this. Um, they're claiming that this article was racist. Quote, this is a false story. Ingram said in a phone call, adding that he had based that conclusion on anonymous sources. Again, there's a good reason that this person does not want to reveal her identity, mainly the fact that we're dealing with Republicans here who would immediately go after her. Of course. And then added, all you want to do is run with stories to target black conservatives. You focus on black conservatives. What? I mean, that entire argument boils down to it is you who are the racists for actually running this story. Checkmate, libs. But, but wait a minute. This isn't about his race at all. I, again, I, we pointed out that the left uh, in, in Daily Beast and all these outlets, they pl reported uh, about how plenty of white conservatives have done the exact same thing and have been called out on their hypocrisy. Uh, pretending to be this, you know, pro-life champion. And then we find out, oops, oh no. Oh, it turns out when it was inconvenient for you to have a baby, you were able to get an abortion. And you were able to get that abortion because of the left, the Democrats who protected the right to choose. Who have been championing the right to choose. And you use that without a problem. And then... Of course, you, uh, you know, campaign against it. You call uh, Democrats uh, the left baby murders, worst thing in the world, while sneaking into the abortion clinic and being like, hey, I've got a problem. i got to get rid of it. So yeah, spare me the hypocrisy, guys. Spare me. One example, by the way, is Scott Desjardins. You remember that? A Republican politician. Uh, he had a mistress who he took to get an abortion. Hey, hey, mistress, oops, I got you pregnant. Why don't we get an abortion? Scott Desjardins was white. Race has nothing to do with this. And again, has everything to do with the hypocrisy. Everything to do with just a nonstop barrage of lies that comes from these people. 
Look, Herschel Walker, when it comes to lying, Herschel Walker cannot help himself. You know, he's a serial liar. I've talked about his lies plenty of times on the show. Especially when it comes to, again, being pro-life and pro-family. Oh, yeah, I'm very, very pro-family in the fact that I don't see them at all. <laughs> like, I, 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 there's, there's a good question whether or not he knows how many kids he actually has out there. I don't know. And look, maybe some of that, uh, you know, some of the falsehoods might have to do with the head injuries he got from football. I, I, I'm being very charitable there. Um, maybe he doesn't know fact from fiction anymore. I think he claimed to be a, what, a, a former agent, like of the FBI or something, a former law enforcement. Really weird stuff. Really strange lies that you almost think like, wait, maybe he does live in a completely alternative reality. Where he thinks he is this person. I don't know. But, or, or, or I should say, maybe he just is, you know, being a total hypocrite. And there's no excuse for it. I, I don't know. The, uh, I, I don't really know one way or the other. That said, I think it is very interesting to talk about uh, the fact and, and to point this out. Because I, I didn't address it anywhere else in the story. But this is an example of somebody with means, Herschel Walker, being very you know wealthy, a former NFL great, um, being able to go and, and pay for these procedures, which are not cheap. Again, we're, we're talking, you know, back in uh, 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 the early 2000s, you know, that uh, it was still over $500 just to get the procedure done. Not to mention lodging, not to mention travel, not to mention all the other costs that are associated with getting reproductive health care like this. Because we live in a country that doesn't guarantee health care to every single person. Uh, and, and also, by the way, thanks to Republicans, thanks to things like the Hyde Amendment, you don't have federal funding or abortion services. Even in the cases where, again, it's medically necessary to save a woman's life. So there's that, but it just shows that people of means, regardless of their public stance in this issue, will always have the option to get abortions, even if they're successful in banning it here in the States or even in the country. For a lot of those people, you can see that they will always, when they need it, will use those means. Again, abortion rights for me, but not for thee. Okay. Moving on. Okay, I'm done. Done. Everything has been a lie. That was conservative influencer Christian Walker, one of the many sons of candidate Herschel Walker, Georgia, following the revelation that he had once paid for an abortion to one of his many girlfriends. Uh, now, the younger Walker, as you can see, it's part of that clip, uh, lashed out in on Twitter, several tweets, several videos, in defense of, interestingly enough, the Daily Beast article, and against his father and Republicans, taking Republican politicians and pundits to task. So now, let me uh, read a tweet here and then show you a video. He said, every family member of Herschel Walker had asked him not to run for office because we knew, uh, we all knew some of his past, every single one. He decided to give us a middle finger and air out all this dirty laundry in public while simultaneously lying about it, I'm done. That reminds me, by the way, of Paul Gozar. You remember Paul Gozar? In part of the Insurrection Caucus. His entire family ran ads against him. Like, all of his family members, uh, they were like, do not elect Paul Gozar. He's insane. Please don't do it. it you know, it, you're, you're, trust me, you're going to regret it. Don't you ever do that. Don't you ever do that. I tell you don't do it. They didn't listen to him. And they elected Paul Gozar. And again, 
he's been one of the worst members of Congress who have been, you know, in favor of literally stealing the election on behalf of Donald Trump. So that said, Republicans didn't care at all, at all, uh, you know, uh, about the stuff that his family had said about Gozar. So I'm not really expecting anything different when it comes to Republican voters in Georgia. Nonetheless, I'm going to show you some more of this video, uh, more of this, uh, this rant, because I think it's actually pretty good. Family values people, he has four kids, four different women, wasn't in the house raising one of them. He was out having sex with other women. Do you care about family values? Everything has been a lie. And so for the right to say, I'm being suspicious for saying, hey, I'm, I'm done with the lies. When you all have been calling me saying, is this true about your dad? Gosh, we're not going to win Georgia, this candidate all. That's been you. You have no idea what I've been through in my life. You have no idea what me and my mom have survived. We could have ended this on day one. We haven't. I haven't told any stories. I'm just saying, don't lie. Don't lie on my mom. Don't lie on me. Don't lie on the lives you've destroyed and act like you're some moral family man. Y'all should care about that, conservatives. We were told at the beginning of this, he was going to get ahead of his past, hold himself accountable, all of these different things, and that would have been fine. Go ahead. He didn't do any of that. Everything's been a lie. Everything's been downplayed. Everything's been cutting corners. The whole thing. And who, who is, whose expense is that at? Me, my mom, as we're chased down by the media, uh, we're, we're terrorized, all these different things. Uh, uh, people are questioning my authenticity. I'm done. Don't lie. Don't put this on me. You, this is a candidate issue, not a me issue. I wouldn't have spoken out if there weren't all these lies every day. Okay. Uh, let me just say, like, I've been terrorized. Really? You've been terrorized. That said, look, a lot of the what he, he says, I'm actually glad he's speaking out. Because, look, this guy has been pretty insufferable uh, as, a, as a conservative influencer. I'm pretty sure maybe that might end uh, as a result of this. But let's go on to uh, his criticisms of so-called family values Republicans. I love that. It's almost as if Christian Walker does not understand what the Republican Party is really about. Uh, you know what? Uh, if he doesn't, let me, just, let me just tell him, right? It's not about family values. It's not about being pro-life. It's not, what it's about is distracting people with culture war issues so that the ultimate goal is to cut taxes for the rich corporations and to deregulate industry that's it that that's what they're always been about republicans are the side of the wealthy the, the entire point of the republican party is to funnel money to the rich and so that's what they truly uh you know uh, fight for which is why republicans have continued to back walker because walker is i mean he's he's not really all that much there and so He's going to, of course, support things like tax cuts, which, by the way, he's also incredibly wealthy. And so, yes, those tax cuts are going to help him, deregulation, etc. And he's one of those candidates, by the way, that also has no problem lying in order to get elected and then voted for things that are going to help him when it comes to his class. It's class solidarity. Now, another thing that I found here very interesting uh, is that Christian Walker says, that he knows even more damaging information about his dad. Apparently, there are things that are worse than this now. And that it could have ended Walker's campaign early. I really can't imagine it getting that much worse than, you know, what we know now. <laughs> it really is amazing. Uh, but look. Good, a uh, couple of good points, by the way. Ben Goose points out uh, that he only spoke up when things started affecting him. Well, that's what makes him conservative. And that's a really, really good point because, yes, when conservatives, when something affects them personally, when they start getting involved, oh, well, now that's when I'm going to speak up. That said, the right wing, their reaction to this, 
they've been raging at Christian Walker uh, for pointing this out, for essentially verifying these accusations, which uh, in another segment, um, Herschel Walker himself called a complete lie and said he was going to sue the Daily Beast for defamation. Again, Walker verified this. Um, the right wing is now, you know, accusing him of being disingenuous, uh, of lying, and not sticking up for or covering for his dad. Take a look. People on the right are pulling up that I did a campaign event with my dad last year. They're saying, well, you supported him all last year and all this year. You look suspicious. No, no, no. You all have been calling me saying, why aren't you on the campaign trail with your dad? Why aren't you helping him out? This looks weird. You should go help him. And I've said to you calmly, I'm not getting involved. You don't know my family life. I did one event last year when we were told he was going to get ahead of his past and hold himself accountable. None of that happened. Everything's been a lie. So... For me to tell you I'm not getting involved, and then you also be flooding my DMs and calling me saying, I didn't know all this about your dad. We're going to lose the center race. And then when I simply say, I'm done with the lies, you go, well, Christian looks suspicious. Excuse me? I haven't told one story about what I experienced with him. I'm just simply saying, don't lie. And then for, for certain political pundits to be pulling up old pictures I posted of my dad, thinking they can police and, and determine what my relationship with my dad was. If you want to pull stuff up, I'll pull stuff up. Don't try me. Don't test my authenticity. All of this has been a lie and you've known it. You've known. So don't you dare. Mm. So look, uh, this entire situation really gives a, a lot of insight into who Republicans choose to run in elections. I mean, he points out that, hey, look, everybody knew about what my dad was doing about his past. And they decided to run him anyway. Why? Well, again, this looks really bad, right? But I would counter that by saying, why wouldn't they? And, and here's my example. Here's why I say that. Remember, it was Donald Trump who endorsed Chris, uh, 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 Herschel Walker, right? Donald Trump has been accused very credibly of doing a ton of terrible things, including cheating on his wife with a porn star while she was pregnant. Also doing alleged rape for, uh, on E. Jean Carroll. There's also the tape where he admits to grabbing women by the genitals because they let me do it. And then... Not only that, it, it, there's creating, uh, I'm sorry, cheating a, a charity out of money. On and on and on and on and on. There's more scandals to Donald Trump than we can count. And yet, what do they do? What do Republicans do? Overwhelmingly support him. Overwhelmingly. I, I mean, they voted for him as president, and they're still with him, no matter what he does. And so, I mean, the Republican base and the operatives don't care. As long as, you know, uh, the voters turn out and the voters don't seem to care either uh, because the voters want their politicians to do what? Two things, fight the culture wars and own the libs. And that suits the donors just fine because the donors, they, as long as people are distracted with the culture war issues like abortion, they, they'll continue to get politicians in place to deliver tax cuts and deregulation. Again, that's the entire point of the Republican Party, to do those things and to service the rich. That said, Christian also addressed some people on the left uh, who say that they have criticized him as a hypocrite for supporting his father while calling out other men for their own marital indiscretions. And of course, uh, yes, that is something that he has done obnoxiously. Now, he decided to defend himself by saying, well, you know, when I criticize other people, I was also implicitly criticizing my dad, you know, because it affected me. Look, I don't care, <laughs> honestly. Um, sure, whatever. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it makes sense. It doesn't really matter. I'm not really bothered by that. Like, oh, she's criticizing the left. I'm on the left. I don't really care about his criticism. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't matter to me, right? Uh, and by the way, I just think that as a conservative, 
if he wants any future in conservative politics or influencing, well, of course he has to throw out criticism about the Democrats. He's got to both sides the whole thing. Um, whatever. It, that's just like a normal thing. Expected, I guess. And, and really, I do. <laughs> Predictably Republican, uh, as uh, Meliscable says in the chat. Um, look, the thing that I can say uh, about that is his dad pretended to be a great family man, and it turns out that no, he was the only thing he was good at when it comes to families is creating more families and not taking care of them and then lying about it for political gain. I, that's the important thing here. The takeaway from the story. And by the way, if he's going to lie and not take care of his families, what makes you think that he would ever take care of the needs of the voters? So, I mean, that's, that's really how it applies to how he would serve as a congressman. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on to um, a horrible story. Dr. Oz, who famously spent years talking fake cures and dubious weight loss supplements on his daytime TV audience, is now facing one of the worst scandals yet. Far beyond his history of being questioned over the efficacy of his uh, supplements in Congress, there is new reporting that research he had done had actually led to the deaths of numerous hundreds of animals. A review of 75 studies published by, the Mehmet, uh, by Mehmet Oz between 1989 and 2010 reveals the Republican Senate candidate's research had killed over 300 dogs and inflicted significant suffering on them and other animals used in his experiments. So, look, I, I got to give you like a warning on this story because, I mean, just the amount uh, of, of cruelty here it's horrifying to listen to. So it, it, again, if you're sensitive to this, you might not want to listen to this next part here. Um, so now Oz, with that warning, Oz was a principal investigator at Columbia University Institute of Comparative Medicine Labs. So now here's the thing. Why isn't Columbia being called out for this, for the cruelty that happened under Oz? Surely there were people that were keeping him in check, right? No, it turns out he actually had assumed full scientific, administrative, and fiscal responsibility for the conduct of his studies. So he was completely in charge of all of this. So this purview was him. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that he was the one doing the, all of the experiments and literally murdering the puppies. But it was under his purview, he knew exactly what was going on. So, more details. Over the course of the 75 studies published in academic journals reviewed by Jezebel, Oz's team conducted experiments on at least 1,027 live animal subjects that included dogs, pigs, calves, rabbits, small rodents. 34 of these experiments resulted in the deaths of at least 329 dogs, while two of his experiments killed 31 pigs. 38 experiments killed 661 rabbits and rodents. I mean, that is a huge death toll that you have. Uh, look, as somebody who loves animals, uh, it, it's utterly disgusting. Now, in the early 2000s, testimony from a whistleblower and veterinarian named Catherine Delo Toro about do, uh, Dr. Oz's research detailed extensive suffering inflicted on his team's canine test subjects, including multiple violations of the Animal Welfare Act, which sets minimum standards of care for dogs, cats, primates, rabbits, and other animals in the possession of animal dealers and laboratories. I, I mean, why does animal testing exist in the first place? Horrifying. Horrifying. Uh, now, the law specifically requires researchers and breeders to use pain-relieving drugs 
or euthanasia on the animals and not use paralytics without anesthesia or experiment multiple times on the same animal. Della Orto testified that a dog experimented on by Oz's team had experienced lethargy, vomiting, paralysis, and kidney failure, but was not euthanized for a full two days. Another was kept alive for a month for continued experimentation, despite her unstable, painful condition, and despite how data from her continued experimentation was not even usable. So that animal suffered needlessly for a month, repeated experimentations for nothing, no, no reason at all. I mean, again, even if there was a reason, there's still no justification for this. Del, um, according to Delorto, uh, one Oz-led study resulted in a litter of puppies being killed by intracardiac injection with syringes filled with expired drugs inserted into their hearts without sedation. Upon being killed, the puppies were allegedly left in a garbage bag with the other living puppies who were their litter mates. Uh, monstrous. Horribly monstrous. There are no words for this. You, you, you threw the living, living puppies in a bag as if they're garbage trash to be thrown out. These are, <laughs> these are living creatures. <sighs> now, look, Del Orto's allegations that were actually have been along for uh, a long time. They were made in 2003 and 2004, and they're detailed in letters from PETA to the university and USDA. In an interview with Billy Penn this, uh, last month, she acknowledged, and I think this is important, that PETA is not a reliable source of information. PETA has had his own issues, for sure, uh, and I'm glad she's made that distinction because, wow, uh, they're, they're pretty cringe. That said, she, she said, look, uh, even though PETA is not a, a, a reliable source of information, as I said, these letters reflected what she had told the organization and him had even provided documentation for. She says, everything that I told them was absolutely true. And they actually did report on it true. And they didn't have to make anything up because it was already horrifying. As a result of this, in May 2004, Columbia University was ordered to pay a total by the USDA $2,000 penalty. That's it. Uh, $2,000. Just, just a little, little tiny bit of money for all these violations of the Animal Welfare Act. The fine paid by Columbia was the result of the settlement between the university and the USDA based on the findings of Columbia's internal investigation of Oz's research, which, as she points out, Del, Del Orto points out, was not good enough. That investigation w was uh, uh, very limited in scope and did not find the vast majority of horrifying things, the torture that he did to these animals. Now, the USDA uh, DA accepted these findings, but again... According to, uh, to Del Orto, the review was faulty and had investigators in the committee that were also complicit in this type of poorly designed, cruel animal experimentation. Del Orto also noted that while Oz wasn't the one who used the nice to dogs and puppies himself, when your name is on the experiment and the way the experiment is designed inflicts such cruelty to these animals, by design, there's a problem. And look, uh, the uh, Columbia is even worse because months after paying the fine in December of 2004, Columbia defended Oz amid the animal abuse allegations, calling him a quote-unquote highly respected researcher and clinician who would adhere to the highest standards of animal care, but neglected to deny any of the specific allegations Del Orto had made against Oz. Now, of course, Columbia had since 
distanced themselves from Oz because of his campaign. They should have distanced themselves from him long, long ago. They actually defended him. Horrifying. On Monday, Jezebel reached out to Columbia's Office of Communications and Public Affairs, as well as Oz's Senate campaign. They refused to comment. And Oz's campaign had yet to respond. So, I mean, there's that. Oz, by the way, had formerly held senior positions, including vice chair of surgery and director of integrated medicine at that medical center. So, look, this is what he did. This is what his, you know, uh, research involved, entailed. And it was filled, no surprise, with animal abuse. I mean, again, I say it's not a surprise because, look, if you're willing to to do this to animals, well, then uh, it would explain why you would also sell all this snake oil to human beings. He doesn't care about anyone except for himself and for his own wealth. These people are absolute sociopaths. And they show it. They don't care about people. They certainly don't care about animals. Uh, And this just, once again, proves it. So much damning uh, information. Absolutely horrifying. And look, uh, even though this is far from the only thing that Dr. Oz has has done uh, that is incredibly questionable and, and just downright terrible, And this, in my mind, this is the absolute worst thing. As, again, an animal lover, I'm just absolutely horrified by the information in this, uh, what he he has done. Disgusting. All right. We go from uh, one monster to another. Ron DeSantis. What the destruction left by Hurricane Ian, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis did what most politicians usually do. Uh, they travel to different areas. Uh, within uh, the storm, uh, you know, the the places that were hit the most uh, by these storms. Uh, However, in at least one area, uh, in Arcadia specifically, relief workers were not thrilled with his appearance because it happened to have gotten in the way of them doing their jobs. I don't give a flying Uh, no. But frustration mounted as civilians were told to pause their relief operations for several hours as Governor Ron DeSantis toured the area. Our hands I, are tied. I'm not trying to be rude, no, I, but I, we've I, been doing this very thing one street over, and the only reason we're not over it's there is because the governor's staff. That's right. I understand. So why does that have to stop right now? It's the same thing we've been doing before anybody was here. All right, we're going to head back Governor, over can I ask you one the, question? Um, I'll get to you. Okay. I'll get to you. Right, still... Frustrated that they had to shut down operations because you're here. Can you just... Let's go. Can, what is your message to them? They had to pause operations, Governor, Let's while you came here. in. Can you... Can you... I'm with ABC Action News. I want you to... That's great. Your message is... You want to pause anything? I think that... Folks, folks were stopped from going in back and forth. So uh, that's ABC Action News uh, who reported this. And, well, look, um, immediately after that report, which didn't look good, representatives for DeSantis literally uh, called the relief workers liars. So now here's Christina Pushaw, uh, Rapid Response Director for DeSantis' campaign, saying that the whole story was, quote-unquote, disinformation, pointing to a statement from the DeSoto County Sheriff's Office that said that operations had stayed rolling the entire time, yes. No, there was absolutely no uh, disruption in this whatsoever. Well, forgive me if I don't believe Florida police, the DeSoto uh, County Sheriff, 
Sorry. I just have a natural tendency to not believe, believe police anymore. I wonder where I get it from. Uh, but not only that, but here's uh, DeSantis also pushing back. In fact, he got a little snippy when he was asked about this report. Yeah, it's just it's a categorical lie. And the sheriff and the county said it's a lie. I don't know why we're worried about these silly issues when we've got people to help. OK, I was the first one to show up in DeSoto and help those people. They were appreciative that we were there. We weren't stopping anything. They had had distributed a bunch of water and food and whatnot. There was nobody even in line at the time. Uh, so it's a total lie. And uh, it's just dumb. A total lie. Uh, very, very dumb. I was, the, I was the first one there. I was the first one there. In fact, you know what? I was great and amazing, and I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, okay, but I would rather, you know, believe the people who are on the ground doing the actual work, you know, helping people over someone who showed up and I guess, you know, says that they were there to help whose boots looked like this. Look at them lily white boots. Those are, those are just beautifully clean, super, super clean boots. I, I don't know. Uh, either he didn't do anything, uh, you know, to dirty those boots up or, and then, you know, we're talking about DeSantis here. Perhaps he had the boot lickers on the job, literal boot lickers, to make sure that they were nice and clean. Pristine. Very pristine. And of course, you can see that officer in the back. A little bit of a smirk there. Um, <laughs> look, I know politicians do photo ops all the time. Uh, and they might even like pick up a case of water and hand it out. They might like be like Paul Ryan, uh, you know, scooping a bowl at the soup kitchen and then promptly leaving. Uh, and by the way, I think it was like an empty soup kitchen. Um, yeah, I know they're ridiculous with their with their photo ops. Um, but again, Ron DeSantis didn't really do anything. While he didn't do anything, he also just actually got in the way of regular workers who were trying to do the things. They weren't allowed near enough to him to do what they were supposed to be doing. Uh, a police officer was like, hey, look, my, uh, my hands are tied. I can't, let you, I can't let you get too close to the governor uh, because, you know, he doesn't want the, the pores near you. Ah, he doesn't want the pores near him. I see. I see. And now, by the way, he's calling those same workers who are doing the right thing. He's calling them liars. He's calling them liars. Uh, and let me just, you know, tell you about a couple of these workers who are helping. These are people like Leslie and Justine Nelson. They used their boat to ferry food, water, and medicine, anything else that people needed, that they, that they couldn't get to the staging areas. They took a reporter out in one of those supply runs. They say that their routine was interrupted by uh, even for several hours before DeSantis was even in the area. So just getting ready for DeSantis had stopped them. Leslie is also uh, the assistant principal at West Elementary and said that she would not let the community where she was born and raised, down, quote, it's not like anything they wouldn't have done for us if they were mobile. That's the kind of community we are. When asked if she felt obligated to take the risk, she said, absolutely. It breaks my heart. It's devastating. But the good thing is, I know what kind of community we live in. And we'll be okay. We always stick together and help each other out. And we'll figure it out. Look, uh, I love when communities get together and help each other and I, I mean that's that's part of what makes communities so great when people will stand up and help their neighbors and help each other to rebuild uh and to survive what i hate is people like desantis who come in and lie about these communities lie about the people who are living there who are personally devastated ron desantis wasn't affected by this at all But look, understand that this is who he is. He's a greasy politician. He's a Republican establishment to his core. You think he's a populist? He doesn't give a damn about the people. 
and he's out, out there doing the bare minimum to help hurricane victims. And again, is attacking the media. He's using this as a political attack now against the media. In fact, during a, an interview with the right of center's Florida Voice website, it's earlier today, DeSantis was asked if there could be any accountability in the media for reporting that the storm had been forecast to strike Tampa. Here's what he said, quote, quite frankly, you have national regime media that wanted to see Tampa because they thought that it would be worse for Florida. That's how these people think. They don't care about the people of this state. They don't care about the people of this community. They want to use storms and destruction from storms as a way to advance their agenda. What agenda? What is he talking about? I, what did you, who wanted, okay, what leftist, what Democrat, what, who would want a storm to target a high population area? That's horrifying. Please cite your sources, cite your sources. No, but he doesn't. He says this, they don't care what destruction is in their wake, meaning the media, not the storms, but the media, they don't care about the lives here. If they can use it to pursue their political agenda, they will do it. Now, did he back up anything that he said? No, of course not. He, again, just blames the media. And by the way, when it comes to the media, weather reporting, which is again, part of the media, part of local news at least, uh, weather forecasting, it's not exactly accurate. If a storm does something unpredictable or unlikely that maybe defies some of these forecasts, how is that exactly the fault of the media? It's unpredictable. And furthermore, does it, how does it prove that they, or whatever, the, you know, whoever they are, wanted the storm to, to hit a particular area to kill more people? That's insane. That's insane. Who thinks that way? would be absolutely monstrous. Oh, I know who thinks that way. There are uh, a lot of Republicans, a lot of right-wingers. I showed you a video last week of OAN, uh, One America News uh, Network hosts that were talking about this, two failed Republican candidates that were like, oh, it's the Democrat weather machine. That's what it was. Yeah, they were steering it towards red states, red areas. Yeah, yeah, a, a part of a Democrat agenda. What? No, this is ridiculous. In reality, what we have is Republicans uh, that voted against all these relief bills, which again made it so that people would not be able to rebuild and would struggle to even survive. That's the issue. And we've also seen right-wing pastors justify, right, blaming gay people, trans people, atheists, whatever, for the appearance of these strong storms, these hurricanes. I got news for you. Th th that's not happening. That's not reality. But again, normal people, normal people do not think this way. They're massively projecting and it's sick. Now, again, when it comes to political agenda, well, it's a political agenda. It's a political agenda. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Do you, are you talking about climate change? I got news for you. If you are, climate change, it's here regardless whether or not you believe it. Being a Republican does not insulate you from the effects of climate change. Climate change, again, we know, among other things, it can make strong uh, uh, storms stronger and more deadly, damaging. And so, hey, I got a political agenda. I would actually like to reduce carbon emissions so that these storms are not stronger, are not more powerful, or more numerous. I know what a what a really strange, you know, political agenda, one that actually, I don't know, tries to protect people's lives and to stop pollution. But apparently, beyond the pale for Ron DeSantis. <sighs> Look, DeSantis and, and the people, you know, that are uh on his side, they don't make any sense. But unfortunately, they don't have to. And what they're going to con continue to do is it's to fight these nonsense culture wars and take photo ops while they continue to screw over the average person.
Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, another story here. Uh, we're going to get the last one. On day one, the sexualization of our kids, pole dancing, and all this other crap that's going on will be forbidden in our schools. <laughs> on day one, all the graphic, pornographic books that are in elementary schools will be, will be pulled out. <laughs> on day one and done, critical race theory is out the window. <laughs> yep. That's right. Yeah, come on. <laughs> that was Pennsylvania gubernatorial candidate Senator Doug Mastriano basically telling you exactly what he's going to do, which is nothing. L literally nothing. Because none of that stuff is actually happening in schools. <laughs> but look, it, it, Republicans... I got to say, Republicans have actually figured out that the only way that they'll be able to live up campaign uh, to their campaign promises is to just make up a bunch of stuff that isn't happening and then ban it after promising to ban it. Uh, promises made, promises kept. You don't see any pole dances in school anymore, do you? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But there never was to begin with. Oh, my. Okay. But look, um, I mean, I love it. They come in, they do these things, and they're like, my job is done. But you didn't do anything. You, you did nothing. No evidence of pole dancing or pornographic books being in taught in schools. There's no evidence of it, which is why they don't have any evidence of it. But, but what he's doing is a lot of Republicans have done. Going full culture war. And why is that? Yeah, well, because it works, unfortunately. In reality, they don't want to solve real economic issues. For example, they don't want to call, uh, you know, solve the, the high rents. They don't want to solve home prices that are unaffordable. They don't want to solve the fact that there are stagnating wages. They don't want to solve the issue that you know, there are people that can't get good jobs. Instead, or you know, the lack of, I should say, Jobs that pay well and offer actual benefits uh, and, you know, solve the problems of not having labor representation. Instead, the, what they want to do is distract voters with nonsense. I got news for you. Wokeness isn't preventing you from getting higher wages. Wokeness isn't why you're struggling to put food on your table. Wokeness isn't why gas is expensive. Wokeness isn't the reason that child care is unaffordable. No, it's right-wing, neoliberal, pro-corporate policies that are the cause of these issues. But instead of actually addressing them and doing something about it, they're talking about how uh, we're going to make sure woke is broke. Now we're going to defeat the wokeness. What is that? Can you even, I mean, you know, uh, like, can you explain what that is? What is wokeness? What does that even mean? No, they can't. Because it has no meaning. It's whatever I don't like. Look, it's the classic thing about how, oh, you know, uh, working class, you might be doing terrible. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to distract you and actually put the blame on people who actually might be doing worse. In this case, transgender people, for example, right? So a right wing has gone uh, to war against transgender people who happen to be bullied and assaulted at incredibly high rates and have higher levels, very high levels of suicidal ideation, especially trans teenagers. They go after black Americans who have less economic opportunities and face higher incarceration rates than their white peers, even when they're, you know, guilty of doing the same crimes. Like, white, for example, white and black Americans smoke marijuana at, at by the same rates. But black incarceration, uh, you know, black people who are caught doing that face way higher incarceration rates. Poor white Americans, by the way, in the Midwest, 
which is where Pennsylvania is, who because of uh, disastrous right-wing free trade policies that were tailored to allow corporations to be able to go overseas, exploit their cheaper labor, and import their products, these people have lost their livelihoods. While these same corporate executives who have been hiking up prices and then blaming inflation on it, even though they're making record profits, take more and more of this country's wealth and stuff it into their own pockets. How about the millions of people who can't afford health care in this country, who can't get health care in this country, and they die as a result? What are you doing to stop, stop that? What are you doing to help regular working class people? What are you doing? Nothing. You're doing nothing. The right wing and the corporate establishment do not want you fighting for these things. They don't want you fighting for health care. They don't want you banding together to fight for labor rights. No, they want, to they want you to focus on this nonsense, this woke stuff, in order to pick your pocket. By making things up that, don't actually, that aren't actually happening. Republican voters, you're being used. And by the way, a lot of them love being used. It doesn't matter to them if there's evidence or not. You heard the crowd. They, they cheered the loudest, by the way, for banning critical race theory. <laughs> I mean, look, that, that's a high level course. The vast majority of people, even most college students, they're never going to see that course. But it doesn't matter. They don't, they don't need facts. Facts don't matter. They live in a post-fact, post-truth world. So they don't care. It's so deeply frustrating to watch the right wing make up problems that aren't real and then to get real people who are suffering, by the way, to vote for Republicans who are not going to solve real issues. They even got people to believe that kids are using litter boxes in the classroom in Minnesota. They make up the most ridiculously false things. And you know what? Uh... Right-wing media is, is largely to blame, I think, on this one. But also for, the, for these people to believe it. But look, all they hear on right-wing media is, oh, you know, the wokeness, it's got wokes, you got litter boxes, you got pornography in the schools. It's all they hear about. And they don't hear the facts. And even when they do, well, it, it's that tribal mentality. They reject them. So I don't know what to do uh, about this situation other than to keep trying to debunk the nonsense for anybody who would listen and to show them how these issues are being used to distract you so that these right-wingers can rob you. And I'm hoping that I'm somewhat successful because they are here to rob you and they've been doing a fantastic job over the past few decades. And they're going to keep doing it with this nonsense until people come around to actually, you know, believing in reality. Until then, we're doomed. All right, so, sorry to go all doomer on you on this one, but Jesus Christ. Okay. <clears throat> Look, uh, that's all the time I have for today. Um, I'm going to have to save the uh, congressional stock trade story for tomorrow. Um, an interesting article from the Washington Post that I actually agreed with, calling out Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats for not banning congressional stock trades. It's a really, uh, really interesting story. Really good story. We're going to share that with you tomorrow. So with that said... Um, Please like and share the stream if you haven't already. Uh, very important that you do so. Again, helps us out greatly. Uh, I just want to thank the Surfs for giving me a shout out on Twitch. It's a, apparently a very new feature uh, where you can shout out creators even when they're offline. So that's really, really nice. Uh, I also want to thank uh, TYT for giving me a shout out a couple of days ago. I had no idea what that was, but that's, that's kind of cool. So yeah, uh, shout outs. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some of that later. Uh, now, Gabby Mathis, thank you very uh, very kindly for the five dollars. Appreciate that. Um, oh, speaking of Twitch, uh, let's raid. We're gonna raid into uh, Deep Dive uh, with Jordan Yule. So everybody check that out. 
uh, to everyone else. Thank you all. Appreciate you. Uh, love you. And uh, remember, change begins with you. Love you all. See you tomorrow. Who's got a hammer? Oh, man, I'm sorry. Please. No, 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 no. Oh, oh yeah. Disappointed! They want to make you drink Starbucks every day from now until forever. They are about to find out. Are you kicking me out the door? You're kicking me out the door. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who.